All right. We are live, 5.59, yeah, we're live on Instagram as well. Starting to see a few people join us. How are we going, guys? Good to see some of you joining on quickly tonight. Instagram followers coming through real thick and fast. How are we going, guys? Hope you are safe and well. And uh, hope our friends in Melbourne are um, surviving the the current torrid times. It's not good views from what we're seeing here, but hopefully it's settling. Kiosk Building Services, how you doing, guys? Just trying to read all this with my uh, without my glasses on. Water lock, waterproofing. How are we doing? Why is it bathrooms? Aqua, Aquatech Australia has joined. Good to see you, Kios. Um, where have we got here? Kevin Taylor. G'day, guys, from Kevin Taylor Floor and Wall Tiling. Hi, Kevin. Good to have you joining us. Tonight, we are talking about a subject that many of you have really been passionate about, probably since we spoke about puddle flanges last, leak control flanges, but waterproofing over or under a screed. So push your questions through. We are on Facebook. We're on YouTube. And on Instagram, you may have seen the recent FC tiling. My Vespa is still running, so all good down here. Great to hear. Uh, from Alpha Waterproofing, how are you going? So, guys, any questions on this, please push them through, and I'll aim to answer them tonight. But this one always gets the juices flowing because many of you are passionate and many of you get these questions bombarded here. And sometimes there is no one way of doing it. So... You might have seen the recent Sealed for Good program. I'm just reading these names here. And I covered a lot of things on that. Um, and so the standard still is quite open. And, and so questions come through. It's a touchy subject, Phil. It is, John, and great to see you, mate. Um, not touchy for me, but it's. I think it's a, a point of conjecture. And people... Yeah, you speak to two different contractors or builders and they'll tell you which way they believe it. So I might start with what my how I cut my teeth in this industry and what my thoughts and processes are. But I am a big believer that it is important to waterproof under a screed. And the reason being, particularly for lightweight construction. So if we're talking about concrete slabs, you could have an argument without it. But I do like that the substrate is protected the base substrate. Now, if we're talking about a concrete slab, if we're talking about um, uh, sheet flooring, suspended flooring, by waterproofing under the screed, it's, for me, the belts and braces position first, that if there is an issue with the tiles, tiles are removed, membrane can be damaged. How are you going, Phil? I'm going great, VCN waterproofing, thank you. Um, tiles removed, membranes damaged, then what happens is you've got exposure to the main structure. So I always like the fact that you can tank the substrate and then we go and look at other alternatives. Akram said, always waterproof the base substrate is crucial. Agreed. Um, so John agrees with me, 100% must waterproof the main surface. And the reason for that is that I like the flood test the base you know that the structure is protected. And when you've got that done, then there are many ways. You know, I always looked at things like our group set 11 y additive in the screed, and we know that the 11 y in a cementitious system, we can have it even fully immersed, and it's waterproof, depending on what ratios you go with. But for me, that was a great system that we have a base membrane, a waterproof screed, and the job's done. Now... I do understand that, and the, and the other reason, sorry, I'm going to go into that, is that what I liked about always with a membrane on the substrate is that it did have a degree of underlay application, and that is that it protected the tile bed in a certain way because nine out of ten membrane systems are flexible, and they have, if they've got good rupture resistance, particularly sheet systems, then... Um, I agree, I haven't waterproof before and after screed or concrete. I'll come back to that wiser bathrooms, but 
by protecting the substrate, the topping on top is protected from any potential movement. If waterproofing over a screed, should it be an engineered screed? So I'll come back to that in a moment, John. So, but that's protecting, and I'm getting lots of questions here. So if I miss them, please forgive me. We'll get to you. Minus waterproofing here. Hi all. Um, so that protects the tile bed, the screed, from potential movement. Now, there's a really good case to waterproof under and over, particularly in shower alcoves, or as we've seen of more recent times, where a client wants a more robust or a longer term warranty. And so a lot of architects now like to specify a system that's on the, on the base, a good screed, and then on top of the screed as well. There is an additional cost to that. So Sydney Waterproof is saying big debate when it comes to corking or to not cork above screed. Okay, so the if, if I'm understanding that question on corking, if you're referring to bond breaker, the fact is a bond breaker must be used in both systems. And that's what I was about to say. So if you decide to waterproof under a screed and over a screed, there's no shortcut. You've got to use the bond breaker for both. You've got to treat the membrane as it's been done independent of the other one. So the base membrane has a bond breaker to the standard, screed, top membranes installed with a bond breaker. Don't think because you're doing under and over that one of those membrane layers can go without the bond breaker. That is non-compliant. You must, you must, must, must use the bond breaker in both layers, whether that's a sheet or a liquid system under or over. So you might have seen, and I talk a lot about a really good sheet membrane system under the screed. And then because it's got nice rupture resistance, it's got a decoupling effect a lot of the time. And then you can have your screed on top with the liquid membrane system, but the liquid membrane on top still must have the bond breaker. Okay. Mm -hmm. So important to remember that guys, don't cut corners from it. It's just, otherwise you're non-compliant and you actually would find that if it is investigated, Everything's going to come up if you haven't done it properly. So treat it as a separate system. Make sure there's a bond breaker in both. Now, the pros of having both is that you've got um, a tile bed that then doesn't enable the screed if it's not an engineered screed, and we'll come into that, John, which is not water resistant to absorb moisture because a lot of the moisture in screeds does contribute sometimes to efflorescence, particularly outside. So this question here is, uh, I recommend waterproofing above screed in balcony and if the door stop is in the wrong direction. If the door stops in the wrong direction, I reckon you should get that right first. If you put a membrane on top of a screed, this is from VCN waterproofing, always put bond breaker as the elastoproof. Thank you, and that's the way to do it. Stephen, Gresh, thanks. Hey Steve, how are you? Bond breaker as per manufacturer specification, most important, definitely. And Stephen, that, that is, that's what I was just mentioning then, that if you're going with a sheet system and a liquid system or vice versa or two liquid systems, you still need the bond breaker as per the specification of that membrane. What about using waterproofing membrane over and under a balcony application? Thanks on that BD project. I'm going to come to external waterproofing in a moment. We'll talk about that. Terry, how are you, mate? Bonded or unbonded over sheet membrane over lightweight construction? Okay, so Terry, I might just come to that when we talk about the external wet areas because that probably is more the case. But um, I always like screeds to bond to a membrane. I don't like the unbonded screed to a membrane um, or a slip sheet. To me, I like the idea that if you've got a good membrane system, good rupture resistance, good tensile strength, and it meets the standard, there's no reason why the screed can't bond to it unless you have a floor that's engineered to move. Particularly, it might be an old structure or an expansion joint or an old joint underneath there that you want to have independent from the, the, the bedding. But more often than not, I prefer that that screed bonds to the membrane below, and obviously the membrane on top of the screed must bond before tiles are bonded to it. So thanks for that contribution. So let's just go for external at the moment. The difference is I mentioned about air fluorescence. And uh, what's that question there before I go there? How do we put a membrane under screed when half the time concreters leave the substrate rough? Okay. 
in Sydney waterproofing, there's a myth with builders that if you use a bond breaker with an above screwed application, water gets trapped in the between the waterproof and tiles and they'll pop off. That's for builders that don't have a bloody clue, let me tell you. Um, that is a myth and it's nonsense. Any system that's as good as its warranty and its bond breaking system does not have any water trap between the bond breaker. The bond, and and that, the fact is on top of the screed, you, you waterproof, you do it properly. There's no moisture trap between the bond breaker and that. I'm not sure what they're dreaming up, but um, Sydney Waterproofing, you've got to tell them that if you warrant the system, they don't need to worry about that. I've not seen that. And if, the, if I would have seen that, I guarantee the issue is more with the application or the waterproofing selection, not the actual bond breaker being uh, water being trapped between the bond breaker or not. The question about the concrete is leaving a rough surface. A valid point comes up all the time. Um, look, this is also, I'll come back to how we, and you've heard me in the past talk about the relationship you have with your clients, your builders. Let them know that this is the way the substrate should be prepared before I come and waterproof. I want to waterproof under the screed. If your concrete is leaving me a shitty surface, what am I going to do about it? Charge them, okay? There are products that we've got in our range and many other manufacturers of them as well that you can actually get the concrete right, make the substrate correct before you start the waterproof. You can't waterproof on a rough concrete surface. I've seen them with boot marks and shovel marks and all that sort of stuff. Get that right first, then put the membrane down. If it's really... And, and if it's a ground floor situation and your builder is not going to pay for that and they've just accepted the concrete is doing a terrible job, then that may be that situation where you say, well, I'm only going to waterproof on top of the screen. But be very wary because what worries me when we waterproof on top of the screen and not underneath, particularly with wall linings, is that gap between the edge of the wall lining and the substrate. And if there is a leak or, or any damage to a tile, and the water gets below, that's where I talk about the substrate and the structure is potentially exposed. And that's why I like tanking under the screed. Sydney waterproof, I think we've got that one. Uh, I hope, uh, pop, pop. Okay, sorry guys. Um, alpha, can you use a liquid membrane under a screed then use a sheet membrane over? Yes, of course, you can do that. Example, we have people that want to put Grips at 38 and then the BRW PF on top, they can do that, or vice versa, sheet first, liquid second. Um, no problem. Use it, use high build epoxy. Yeah, right. Okay. Um, where have we got here? All right. Akram, is it safe to lay villa board over yellow tongue in a bathroom, then waterproof directly on villa board? Can that create a movement in your screed or cause failure in your membrane? So I think what you're saying, yeah, so you're talking about like a cement sheeting system. You can put that underlay, that's a cement sheet tile underlay on top of the yellow tongue. I would suggest you look at something like our express lay system. It's a far better decoupling system. And uh, the benefit of it is it's a waterproof membrane as well. So you put that over your yellow tongue flooring in a wood area. And then you can, and it's AS4858 approved and accredited, screen on top. And you can put your liquid membrane on top of that if you if you want. Um, the question you've got, Akram, is that can well, they create a movement in your screed or cause a fail in your membrane? The the cement sheet on yellow tongue won't create a failure in your membrane, but if you're putting that down, then you've got to start the waterproof application immediately and direct. And there's there's nothing wrong with doing that, but it is somewhat costly, um, particularly in time compared to something like the express lay, which is a peel and stick membrane, you get it down and it's waterproof. And so you've actually got your base membrane, you're smart with your time on how you manage that. Uh, good evening, Mr. Gripset. How are we going, guys? Good to see you all, Tiles. Um, so hopefully that, that answers that question, Akram. Let's go to the external because that come up. Um, external membranes and external balconies. This is where a lot of the time... Um, all tiles, this one's there. I used the E60 primer on my screen. Today I went back and it listed. Does this mean it was not fully dry? It would have to be pretty damp, correct, for that to have happened. Very, very unusual for an epoxy coating to blister. 
uh, are you guys planning to open a warehouse in Sydney? Some, sometimes it's hard to get materials quickly. I'll come back to you on that VCM waterproofing, but speak to our team about that. But let's go into the, the screeds and balcony applications. Now, if you've got a concrete slab that's outside on the balcony, it's suspended. I think this is the case where we should look at over and under screeds, uh, membrane systems, because we have efflorescence. We, so we spoke about wanting to ensure that we tank the structure. So under the screed is ideal. Get that all right. Get the wall floor junctions protected. And then you have a screed, and that's where I'd recommend. So John's asking about the screed MPA. But have an engineered screed or a water-resistant screed. Now, screed MPA, with things depend, that can depend not just on the additive, but the makeup of the screed how much cement content is in there and the type of aggregate that you're using. But the MPA, the screed for me, John, is not overly critical for a screed that's creating the falls. If we've got areas that are going to have impact with high traffic, that could be different. But, you know, a screed of 10 MPA, even 8 to 10 MPA is fairly strong for what it's serving the purpose for, which is really to get the falls to the drainage outlets and then a membrane on top. Remember this, the higher the MPA in the screed, the more additive you've got in there, then the, the longer it's going to take for that membrane on top of a screed to dry, okay, because there's less absorption, because it's water resistant. So always take note of that. And a screed is not really designed to be, or a screed underneath a tile bed is designed to allow you to get the falls where you want them to be. Now, the membrane on top of a screed, though, externally, does prevent and help prevent this issue with air fluorescence, which we're seeing around the country. Every state of the country, whether it's up in the warm, humid conditions up north or in the colder conditions down south. And that's because you get moisture, retained moisture in that screed bed, sun comes out, drying comes, obviously the membrane's doing its job below, but it's discoloring the grouts and causing air fluorescence to those grout joints, which is an ugly eyesore, and you don't want that. And it does slowly break down that, that application where you start to then have to remove um, silicons or sealants and grout systems. So my suggestion is I really like and a big advocate for under and over externally. I think it's, a, it's just the, the way to go because you know that you've got the structure protected, being suspended, whether that's a lightweight or a Bondex slab or a concrete slab, and then you've got on top of the screed. But, guys, I still... John's mentioned about um, an engineered screed. I just like the idea of a really good additive in the screed that reju reduces that moisture absorption. It, it's a really good process to do that. Fortress waterproofing. How are you, Chris? Good to see you, mate. Uh, all tiles. What's your advice on the 60? Okay, do I need to strip it? Oh, let me come back to your all tiles on that because we are talking tonight about just the screening systems. I'll come back to the E60 at the end, and if I forget you, please... Message us tomorrow and we'll come back to you with, with full spec on details on that. But the screed, guys, is it's something that um, these issues with fluorescence has been created because of membranes under the screed, okay? But the thing is, I think you're taking a big risk external structures, just waterproofing on top of a screed and not underneath. And so, like I said, I've really cut my teeth in the industry, always waterproofing the structure first, then a good screed, and then if you need to have that membrane on top, which is encouraged, particularly outside, go with that. One of the um, things that internal wet area applications are doing now, and a lot of the guys are offering this to their builders, and it makes really good sense, is when you are waterproofing under the screed um, in a bathroom, but in the shower alcove, that's where you can offer the under and over to keep it still cost competitive. That's obviously where the bulk of the water is. It makes really good sense. You can have a good case that a nice waterproof additive in the screen outside the shower alcove will still do the job for you with the um, with the uh, membrane underneath and an additive in that screen. Question here, control joints in the screens. Really, really good point and one that should be looked at, particularly for large areas where you've got, um, this is what Waterlocks is saying, you definitely wouldn't risk just under screes to external wet areas. 
great call and a good move for your business. Um, will two coats of membrane above screed affect the screed slope? No, it shouldn't. The slope, one in 80, one in 100, shouldn't be affected by two coats of membrane on top of the screed. Kiosk building. We use the same system internally and external, except the screed we use is 2P on the bottom. BRWPF with E60 primer with F-Lock always does a trick. Great system, and I think you go to bed with peace of mind with that sort of system, and well done. Um, the only thing I'll tell you is that instead of the F-Lock, try the 11Y or try the H2O, which is a great additive to put in your screed to help with the effluorescence side. But that's a bit of a group set bias, but you're doing a great system there, Kios. Well done. Um, let's go back to control joints. Control joints in large areas where you're tiling on screeds. Now, this is where understanding the tiling standard is really important for all of you because the fact is if it's a large area and depending on the type of tile, they may need to incorporate control joints in those tiles. Now, a control joint and a screed, it is separate to the structure. So it's only normally a control joint is put into the tile bed, the tiling system, and that could be just a silicon joint or an expansion joint in that tile bed that doesn't necessarily have to be in the screed because of the thermal movement. But if it needs to be in the screed, then make sure that should be signed off by a consultant or an engineer if that's required. Because if you start to take that in your own hands, you might be creating more joints where there's not needed. And it needs to, it's, it's, it's not just a guessing game with, with control joints and screeds. They need to be purposeful for that reason. Uh, thanks, Chris. Above and over. Brian Whittaker. Sorry a bit late. I was just wondering how you go about waterproofing into the puddle flanges when you're doing the top and bottom. Thanks, Brian. I'm going to come back to that right at the end because I mentioned that to Shandy before we went on tonight. I uh, just want to make sure I get these questions here on Instagram. Hey, mate, have you guys changed the flooring of GP primer? It's been dripping excessively. Okay, on those questions, guys, that are not related to screeds, can we just come back to them tomorrow and I'll get our team to make sure we answer you? Alpha. I have a job I'm waterproofing under the screed, then over the top, not for waterproofing purpose, but is a stone mosaic that can that can't be grouted. No problem. I mean, at the end of the day, there's nothing stopping you from doing those systems over and under, if I'm understanding that correctly. Um, but if you're doing that, then I always suggest that things like you know, like the sheet system under the screed is a really good way to protect the substrate, particularly if you're concerned with any of those those stones being affected by movement because you've got the, um, the the crack resistance in the sheet system like the PF or the uh, express lay system, and then you can put the liquid on top. And in that system there, I think a, a cementitious on top of the screen like the 2P would be ideal. Uh, what do we got here, Kios? I was going to ask you if you have a equivalent. I'll give it a go. Well done. Uh, okay, everything's there. Um, okay, so now, uh, Brian, really good point that he raises, which we have answered before, and there was a you, and we're going to give you this YouTube link tomorrow on a previous Sealed for Good episode about when you're doing over on the screen and how you treat that puddle flange, and it is a really good point. So, number one, you must the the, the membrane under the screed must be tanked accordingly to the standard, and that puddle flange needs to be flush with the floor and recessed. And then I would suggest you flood test that if you can. So you know that that, that system under screed is doing its job. Screed goes in with something like the 11Y, and then you go and put the membrane on top. That membrane on top, we did show how you incorporate a double puddle flange or double leak control flange. And secondly, how you've got to seal, how that's got to be integrated. Because if you seal the top part and the bottom and you trap the moisture, that there's no release of the, let's say the top membrane fails and moisture's in that screed below, you've got to enable that to have an outlet to go into the flange below. That's what a leak control flange is for. Now, without going into details, and I haven't got all the props for me tonight, but we have got a really good video on that. And the gap course does cover that. So, Brian, I'm really glad that you brought that up. Um, please refer back to that video. And any of you want to see that, when we put the link up tomorrow, 
check that out because it's a worthwhile video to check out on how to address that situation. Cast in waste on balconies are an issue with bedding then waterproofing over. Cast in waste on balconies. Uh, yeah. Then bedding over. They are, they are. But if, if it's the bedding over that's the problem, John, in terms of bond, if that's what I'm thinking you're trying to say, then that's where we use the, the our, um, our butyl squares because this, the, then you can bed over them directly without any issue, if I understand it correctly. dana has got a question here. Does the H2O allow you to screed Monday... H2O Tuesday morning, then apply 38FC once dry. The H2O lets you put on the 38FC within 30 minutes, and that's the big that's the big um, advantage of it. Uh, we've got a couple of questions here on Instagram. What is usually the drying time of E60 on a screed? Um, look, around about four hours, for, and that's more, most epoxy primers. However, if the screed's got dampness in it, it's always going to take longer, always. And it depends on how damp it is. Now, if you've got a membrane underneath that screed, all tiles, and then you put something on top, remember, the screed's going to take longer to dry because it's got no absorption from below. There's a membrane there, and it can only dry from evaporation. So if that moisture retention is in, that's where a moisture meter is really important to have. Or you can do the old trick with a sheet of plastic on top of the screed, and if you see within half an hour, an hour, that the condensation is coming through on that plastic, you tape it to the, the screed, you know it's really damp. But a moisture meter is always a better method to go, but that will tell you and give you a bit of an idea on that. But on a, even on a cured concrete surface, E6 is going to take about four hours to dry before you can get on it, if you're doing it properly. Uh, if the substrate doesn't fall into the drain, isn't that pointless if the substrate doesn't fall into the drain? Well, that's why you put a screed. Most substrates don't fall to the drain. A screed goes on top, but you still need to protect the substrate and with capillary action, you still will get sitting moisture on that base drawing into the drain. If you do waterproof under and above screed and after time you've cracked the screed because movement of cement on chipboard, would that affect the waterproofing on top of the screed? Um, good question. So firstly, if you've got chipboard or timber flooring, which I think you're referring to, that's why we like a sheet system on top of that. Um, and you must make sure it's a wet area flooring, firstly. But it is likely that it could come through and crack the screed. A flexible membrane on top, um, you'd have to have a lot of movement, I think, but a good system would prevent that. And that, hence why I like a sheet system underneath, because that will give a, a degree of crack resistance, protect the screed, and if there is minimal movement to that screed and you've got a flexible system on top, uh, I don't, I've not seen that crack both under and over screed systems uh, from, from the flooring. Uh, Glenn, I hope I, in relation to the leak, leak flange, I'm not sure if I understood your question there, Glenn. Um, sorry, mate, if I've missed that properly. Um, full go waste. I'm not sure what full go waste are, John, but if you've got some details on it, just push it through. Um, so what's... So, yeah. Okay, so Glenn, I think, is referring to that if, in relation to the leak control flange on the base. Um, the thing is, Glenn, if you are waterproofing under the screed to protect the substrate, you've got no choice. The standard will tell you you must use a leak control flange underneath that. So ensure that it is recessed. And you will find, though, if you've got a flat floor and the, the flange is recessed and it's flush, not protruding the, the floor level, it is still, if you have water sitting on that base membrane, it still is, like I said, with capillary action, a, a minor amount of drawdown into that drainage outlet, but you must have it there. You can't not have a leak control flange there, even if the floor is flat. Hence, screening, um, and then you put the membrane on top, you're going to do the same thing with that leak control flange back on top of the screed with that membrane system. So the two things we've addressed tonight is that you, both membrane systems, puddle um, bond breakers must be used in accordance to the manufacturer's recommendations over and under, regardless, you've got to do it properly for both, and leak control flange should be used for both systems. Hopefully that helps. 
James Hardy always recommends slip sheet and reinforced bedding. I know they do, John, and that is their recommendation, and that is one for movement. And I've got no problem with James Hardy making that recommendation if that's what they believe with their systems. And if you're following, if you're if you're working over a, a James Hardy substrate like cement sheet or scion, and that's what they're recommending, then follow it. Okay. However, there are membrane systems out there, and things like our decoupling systems that we've got that grips it will give a warranty on how that's used in an over and under situation on top of that and even with some of our sheet systems uh, skyline also has a control joint if the balcony is 4.5 meters so in the screen john i think that's what you're referring to if that is the case then again go with that but these are this, these are really good tips because we should be always following what the manufacturer's recommendations are so if you go and that's why i'm always a big fan of the james hardy manuals because they go to everything, not just how to fix their system, but also what goes on top. And it's a really good reference point. Bill, come on this building 101. This is what we were taught at TAFE. Come on, this is a building 101. Okay. Okay. Yeah, well, Bill, it is 101, but building 101, but unfortunately not everyone gets to to uh, do building 101 and they, uh, they attack it the other way around. But this, a lot of it is common sense. The biggest issue here is when people rush into these applications and they find that they've, um, they've, they're just sort of trying to wing it and that's where it goes wrong. Always follow the manufacturer's recommendations, otherwise no warranty. And that is our, that is, that's what we've been drumming, the, beating the drum for many, many decades on that. So keep following that bill and, um, and you'll be doing the right thing and ensuring your clients are as well. Uh, have I missed anything here on Insta or we've got here? Express lay on top of particle board is the way to go, in my opinion. Point is to use a liquid. Agreed. More importantly, I'd like to think that we've got to try and guide our builders away from timber inward areas, full stop timber timber floor shedding. Um, can you use sheet membrane for waterproofing if the joint between the floor sheet and the cement sheet not level or go with a liquid membrane? Um, sheet membrane is ideal. But if, if I'm understanding that correctly, use the elastoproof joint band on that joint where you've got um, a sheet or a joint that's that's subjective. And if it's got movement, you must make sure that the tiler knows that so he can follow that through with his joint on top. Best building practice, two coats of membrane under and over the cement scrape. If that's how we're going with it, go with that. Some of you may want to go with a sheet and a liquid system. Some of you might want to go with a sheet and a sheet. But the two-layer system under and over membrane, a system under the screed, sorry, and over the screed, not under the membrane, under and over the screed with a membrane system. If they're approved membranes, go with it. Grips has got a number of applications and solutions here to follow, and um, you can give that a try. Guys, there's been a lot of activity tonight, which is fantastic. And if I've missed any of your points, please put them through and our team will get to you tomorrow. A few of you had a few questions about supply. Really appreciate you putting them through, guys. But I want to make sure that for the bulk of the viewers tonight that we're not missing out on the key things to discuss. Our team are there to help you. Please ring the sales team or our uh, customer service team and they'll make sure that they can answer all those questions for you. Uh, all those love hearts coming through. Thank you. All right. Now, a couple of key things I want to talk about. Um, next week, there's a really... Oh, well, so let me get to this question. BCM. Would that sheet membrane allow some capillary action to draw from water from a bed that is waterproof on top? Not that I believe so. Um, if you look at all the membranes that are out there, they've got to do a test, which is a water absorption test as well. There's a there's a reading in that that's required for a 4858 membrane. That takes that into account. And a, a small, all good membrane systems that have good bonding properties for cementitious proper, uh, systems, like a tile bed, screed or a tile adhesive, does have a degree of absorption. And that helps the adhesion a better bond than something that's non-porous. So hence, a lot of the PU membranes out there, solvent-based ones, you can't bond a cementitious system directly to it. It just won't absorb. Whereas that's why they they, um, they put the floating floor on top. So if I understood that correctly, BCM, 
a good system like our BRWPF has got a degree of absorption, but you'll see that the the adhesion properties of the three to that system, um, it's phenomenal. And that's really ideal for what you're trying to do. Robert Stefano, so please explain how can water find its way into a puddle flange placed on a flat floor? Okay, it can't find its way into a puddle flange, but you need to have that flange on a flat floor because that's what the Australian standard states. Okay, so if you're waterproofing under a screed, you can't just waterproof it and not have a leak control flange under there. The reality is with capillary action, if there is a hole or a flange there, you have got a small opportunity for that water to be drawn into that area. Now, if it's a dead flat floor, you're, you're probably right, water won't find its way there. But if you decide to put a membrane under the screed, guess what? If you don't put a leak control flange there, you're non-compliant. So you must do that. Um, what primer do I recommend, Bill? It depends on the membrane system. On a concrete floor, a primer that's porous externally, I'd use one of our vapor barrier primers, E60, H2O. Um, but you've got to make sure that it is suited for the membrane, not just any primer for any application. So we've got a number of primers in that field and, and really important to to, um, to follow that. Hopefully I answered it. Too easy tiling. Well, the puddle flange rebated to create a flat surface. Always rebate the flange on a flat surface, but still that question that Roberto was talking about, that if you've got a dead flat floor, water may not go anywhere, understand that but you are non-compliant if you don't have a leak control flange in that that membrane system under the screen. All right, what I was meant to tell you all, there's a free webinar next week. Now, I really recommend, this is with uh, Shandy and Stan Juris, building consultant about changes to the New South Wales building regulations. Now, you might think, well, I'm not in Sydney or New South Wales, this doesn't relate to me. This is information that'll be valuable to tap into because a lot of things that are happening in New South Wales often find their way around the other states. It's on the 29th of September on Wednesday. Our, our socials will show this, but register, get involved with that. It's free because this is where you'll be able to hear it firsthand and get involved in the conversation. And then you might be able to use that information to go elsewhere. Uh, Bay Point Projects. Okay, there you go. You got your shout out. Um, more importantly, GAP training on the 18th, 20th, and 22nd of October. Don't miss out. Book. We've had a phenomenal amount of people come through the GAP courses over the August, September period, and October is keeping is continuing through there. So um, please tap into that and check it out because it'll make you a better waterproofer and more knowledgeable. And knowledge rules. Um, and don't forget. Head over to our latest YouTube video about over and under screeds where I speak about that because there's a giveaway there with the JBL speaker, grip set cap, the grip set beanie for those of you still in Tassie or Victoria, and a grip set t shirt. So get onto that. Now, last couple of questions that have come through here. Best primers for 38 FC, Joshua. Often than not, it's the GP primer, grip set OP, or the E60. Shane, what's the best way to deal with CFC subfloor transitioning to suspended slab over the joint? The plan was to waterproof over the screed. Any special, any suggestions or special attention? Um, I believe that the, if I understand that right, Shane, if it's a suspended slab and you're going over the joint, the uh, I would be using the elastic-proof joint band if I, if you can, if I understood that correctly, and make sure that that then is identified. So when the tile bed goes on top, that joint should follow through into the tile bed. If we've not answered that question correctly, maybe just give us a quick sketch or a photo and shoot that it through tech services and we'll help you with that. Stephen, Stephen Gresh, well worth doing the gap train. Thanks, Stephen, definitely is. Um, I should take over that joint where it transitions before the screed is laid. Definitely before the screed is laid, do that, protect that joint, Shane. Uh, where are we? I think I've watched all your videos so far. <laughs> Thanks, VCM Waterbury. I appreciate your support. Guys, you have been fantastic once again. Can anyone do the gap training? Of course you can. Um, we have different levels, but if you are not qualified waterproofer, you are welcome along, Jennifer. So um, please 
inquire and our guys will guide you along the right way on how you can get involved with GAP. Fantastic to see you all. I reckon we nearly had a record uh, night tonight, guys. Um, do we have any courses in Canberra? Joshua, I know we've got some lined up. COVID's been a bit of the issue there, but uh, just inquire because we do want them all around the country. We've got them online at the moment, which will also help anybody wherever you are. Do you recommend fully encapsulating the screed, allowing it to breathe at the waist when doing a screed over doing a screed seal? So I was talking about that before, Peter, um, and we do have a video on that. So hopefully um, that's going to answer that question. I'm going to wrap this up. I did uh, early in the session guide you that we have a, had a previous seal for good video on that. If you need more questions on that or more detail, but we do recommend that the screed can breathe. You can't totally encapsulate it. Um, but if the screed is fully cured and then it's encapsulated, then it doesn't need to breathe. However, if there's a breakdown in that membrane, the screed must allow moisture to come through. So uh, I think I might have answered that there, but we do have a detail to protect you and, and guide you on that one. Um, you're going you're gonna to do it in Melbourne when you get out of prison. Well, yeah, hopefully you guys are out there soon. Um, thanks, John Knight. Uh, it's my birthday. Give me a shout out. Lloyd James. Lloyd, I'm on glasses. Lloyd Jones. Lloyd Jones, it's your birthday. Happy birthday, mate. All right, everyone. Wish Lloyd a happy birthday. And um, happy to hold a GAP program at, at Beaumont and Fishwick. Thanks, Lloyd. Um, have a great birthday. And I hope the weather's doing well over there and you're safe in Canberra. Guys, thanks for the contribution tonight. You've been a fantastic audience once again. Loving your contribution. Remember, Keep pushing the change out there and let's make sure that we're progressing the build and let's lead it from the front with the waterproofing. See you next time, guys.